Hi, in this video, I will demonstrate how to use one of our new photogrammetry tools, Vertex Blended Extensions. This feature seamlessly extends a scan trunk or custom mesh by wrapping the end of the imported mesh around the beginning of the child branch using the vertex-based alpha blending to hide the seam. With this feature, a static model can be procedurally built into a full randomizable tree. First, I'm going to import my mesh by clicking the Meshes tab plus icon and selecting my file. Then import the textures by going to the Materials tab, click the plus icon, and select the Diffuse Color Texture. The other textures should automatically import into the corresponding spots. However, if it doesn't, you're just going to have to click and load them individually. You need to also make sure to assign the mesh to the material. Now that I have my assets imported, I can create a mesh generator, which incorporates a static mesh as part of the model. I'm going to add a mesh generator by right-clicking in the Generation Editor, go to Add Geometry, Photogrammetry Group, and then select the Mesh option. In the Mesh Generator properties, I need to scroll down to the Mesh group to set my material to the imported trunk material. With that set up, I can create a vertex blended extension, which blends the imported mesh with a speed tree procedural branch. I do this by right clicking, going to Add Geometry, Photogrammetry Group, and selecting the vertex blended extension. This will add a stitch and a branch generator to your generation editor. Your stitch band will be placed in a default position and will need to be moved into a better spot. Something to keep in mind is that if a mesh is too contorted or has gaps or inverse triangles, you won't be able to bridge the two pieces. And if there are any red lines, then it means that the rays that have been cast out haven't hit any geometry from its current position. You will notice as I move the stitch to a better position, the color on the ray lines will change. Orange is close and green means your placement is good. I am moving the stitch by using the translate hotkeys W for move and E for rotation. While placing the stitch, you will probably have to edit the height property, which increases and decreases the height of the stitch, and the clearance property, which adjusts the stitch's radius size. Now the properties in the blend region, opacity group, controls the transparency of the trunk geometry in the stitch region. The fade curve controls how the opacity of the blend is computed. The part of the curve that is at the value of 1 is fully opaque, and the part of the curve that is at 0 is fully transparent. So with this curve, the bottom of the stitch is opaque, and the top of the stitch is transparent. The noise properties here add random noise variation to the fade, so the blend is not so noticeable. Next is the geometry group. These properties shape the trunk geometry in the blend region to the child geometry. Seal controls how much of the parent mesh is formed around the child mesh. Minimum gap sets the minimum space that is kept between the parent mesh and the child mesh. And child shaping controls how far up the child node the shape of the parent is applied. In this case, how far up the shape of the trunk is applied to the procedural branch. Segments control how many horizontal segments are in the band. And tessellation controls how much the band geometry is tessellated. If your branch is noisy or irregular, you may need to edit the amount of geometry the band has with the segments and tessellation properties. Now I'm going to assign my texture to the branch and make some adjustments to the blend. Okay, that looks good to me. Once this is all set up, you can continue to build the rest of your model using Speedtree's procedural geometry, which I'm showing here with the branch setup on this model. That is it for this video, and thank you for watching.